All right, Cursor 1.0 version just dropped. Ton of new features. I'm gonna give you a demo of all of them so you can incorporate them into your workflow. Let's go. So first thing I wanna talk about is background agents. They were slowly releasing these to people over the last few weeks. I didn't get it, but it's basically a remote coding agent. And I'll show you a quick demo in my app, Optu. So you could kick off this agent using the background tab here, or also command E opens up a familiar screen. You do have to use a max model and they recommend Claude for Sonnet Max. I have this request to add health indicators at the top of my AI health dashboard up to you I'm building. So same thing as a chat, kick it off and connect it to GitHub first and we'll let it cook. So we have that agent in the background. We can click command E to also see it's in progress here and click into it to view all the changes it's currently making and its thinking process and logs. And when it's done, we have the option to create a pull request for it on GitHub, check out locally or import it to a local chat. I'm gonna check out locally, commit it as unstaged changes so I can verify it works. Yep, we can see the changes here. So if I go to my app, awesome. I can see the three status indicators I wanted up here just as I requested. And you can imagine the productivity gains of this. I could kick off 10 at once. I could kick one off, go leave, go to the beach, come back, have the work be done. A lot of potential here. The next cursor feature in this update is the MCP one-click install support. MCP servers were supported before, but the setup was a little janky. But now we can just go to this link and choose from some of the preset MCPs they have. For demonstration, I'm going to do Notion. So clicking this link will allow me to open up my installation for the MCP server. I'll click install here. It's going to start loading up our available tools. Once that's done, I have all the tools available for me here. Then I can reference the MCP in the chat right here and ask it a simple question like what tasks do I have on my to-do board? Click submit and it should pull in the live data. And we can see here it read the actual to-dos from my Notion. A simple example using Notion, you can imagine if you wanted more context, in some of your chats or more context for your background agents to have while they execute. This could be a huge tool to have them make more effective and efficient changes. Next up in the docs, we have the ability for chat to make visualizations using mermaid diagrams. This seems like a small change, but it's a huge plus for visual learners like myself to actually get a visual diagram of the architecture of the code base or any other visualizations it wants to create to explain a topic. So we can go into chat like here. I can ask for, hey, make me a mermaid diagram showing the system arc would be helpful for a junior dev. Click submit. And once that chat finishes, we can see this beautiful mermaid diagram in the response with some other helpful context. We can click in and full screen this and get a nice visual architecture of, for instance, this Next.js app with the front end layer, the for sale hosting, some of the auth integrations with webhooks and ngrok and superbase. So you can imagine this would be very helpful to help understand the code base or abstract concepts instead of shifting through a lot of files. Next up, we have a feature you gotta turn on. That is memories. Now Cursor can remember facts from past conversations and reference them in the future. You can turn this on by going to cursor settings, rules, turn on memories here. I don't have any memories yet. I just turned this on today, but you can see in the example here, when we asked uh, the agent to not restart development servers as they're hot reloading, Cursor will then know that for the future. This is huge for me because it does exactly this. It's already running. It'll do npm run dev and just hit a roadblock in development. So this will be very nice for workflow efficiency. Another feature more well suited for larger teams than solo devs like me is their new release of Bugbot which is free for users for a couple of weeks. And this automatically reviews your PRs and leaves comments in GitHubs. So this can be a useful tool for spotting blind spots when developing for teams. Uh, they have the full docs here. Yep, free seven day trial, how to set it up in your GitHub repo. Me personally, I'm a solo dev. I'm testing everything, pushing to main. So this won't be super helpful, but I can imagine at my nine to five job where we have a large team a lot of moving PRs, this can help expedite the PR review and QA process. Another big update for all the data and machine learning guys is you can now run agents in Jupyter Notebooks. 
not something I've done, but the agent can now create and edit multiple cells inside of Jupyter with a significant improvement for research and data science task. You can see them give an example here in agent mode in it updating the notebook here. Interesting, but not something I'll personally use. And the last thing they put in the channel log is pretty cool. You can now have a better view of your usage in your cursor settings. So if we go to cursor.com slash dashboard, we can see my line edits over time, number of tabs I've accepted, pretty funny, been slacking recently, I guess, and all the requests we've made. So cool analytics integration. And as always, you know, can manage this for large teams. So if you have multiple people on your plan, you can see all the integrations and if you're hitting your spending limit and all that. So I hope you guys found this useful. I know myself, I'm gonna be experimenting a lot with the background agents. So I'll be making some content on that. So make sure you subscribe to see those. Like the video, comment your thoughts, and I'll see you guys in the next one.